Hello, y'all. Welcome to Gotcha Racing, episode number seven, which just, by the way, is how many championships Jimmy Johnson has. I hope that's not backwards in the uh, uh, finishing recording. But we have a whole bunch of NASCAR news to go over, um, and I might be late on this, but I do have a couple of uh, sponsorships I missed, one of them being Bubble Walls, uh, now being sponsored for, I believe, one race in the Wheaties car. And, uh... I'd like to find the other one. Ah, no. Hold on, my chase bits go on. Ah, it's over here. All right, uh, Chase Bisco will now be driving the Miranda tractors, uh, Ford Mustang. So that's also going to be pretty cool. So yeah, that's a quick sum up of uh, what I missed last week. Uh, but this week we're talking about some brand new news, some stuff you probably haven't heard of yet. Um, so, let's dive right in. The first thing I have here is, um, I'll cover the L.A. Coliseum. Um, it is set, it is, um, yeah, it will, it's, that. Yeah. According to Jill Pink, uh, J-A-L-O-P-N-I-K, link will be in the description down below, um, the NASCAR L.A. Coliseum track will cost $1 million to build. And, well, I see a million dollars as a lot of money. And my opinions on the LA Coliseum is, I mean, I guess it sounds like a really cool, oh yeah, this is what's going to get fans into NASCAR. But like, eh, did, we, we have tons of other short tracks if y'all wanted to move it to a short track. Um, and once I saw the million dollar price tag, I'm like, I don't know about that one, but then, um, Joe Pink, uh, added a very good, um, price thing, price range here, that Iowa Speedway actually cost $92.7 million to make, so NASCAR just throwing around a couple million, or a single million, probably isn't that much. I'm still very excited to see what's going to happen with the next-gen cars at the LA Coliseum. I'm still excited to see the Coliseum racetrack, because I think that's going to look pretty cool. Um, we're like, unlike Bristol, for Bristol, I was like, uh, we already have, like, dozens of short tracks and literally, or dirt tracks, and, like, you could literally put those things on any dirt track, and it would have gotten fans excited for NASCAR being back on dirt. Well, for the LA Coliseum, it's not quite like that. You don't have just the fact that it's at the LA Coliseum alone is very like, whoa, wait, what's happening to uh, some new potential fans? So I definitely think that this one, this one's going to be an interesting race. Um, yet again, a million dollars is a lot to you and me, but apparently to NASCAR that means nothing because yet again they spent ninety-two point seven million on Iowa. So, well, NASCAR's spending a lot of money, uh, but hopefully it's for the best. Hopefully we get a lot more fans, and we can do it again next season, if everything, you know, is cool in the end. So here, my next story I have is, fans go crazy as Michael Waltrip hints at NASCAR Cup Series return from Essentially Sports. So, this came from a tweet. Let me see if I can scroll down to it. If it'll load. Uh, Bob Pop, Bob Park, Pockris, sorry, I can't talk today, uh, tweeted, uh, Kozlowski said, we like everything today, uh, just some from, just some more than others. I'm pretty excited about I'm pretty excited about it because the cars are significantly more difficult to drive. If you make a mistake, it's, the penalty is huge. The Forge felt like it was a 2005 Cup car. And I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about the next-gen cars because I can go on a long spiel about that and I kind of sort of have a lot more to get to. I've spent at least five minutes trying to get my brain to process words for the LA Coliseum. Um, but I definitely think that the next-gen cars are going to uh, work require talent to drive and I'm very excited that it's it's gonna be put back into the driver's hands 
I definitely think that's going to call for better and closer racing next season. So I definitely think that putting the talent, or putting the competition to be behind the driver, the driver has to drive the car. I, I definitely feel like it's going to require a lot of talent. It's going to be really good this season. Um, Michael Waltrip replied to that, and he said, I ran pretty good in 2005. Maybe I'll try it again. And well, some fans went crazy with it. One user responded, Mike, you had a 23rd place average finish in 2005. Well, that might be true. He did only win four races, and all four of those were on super speedways. So Michael Waltrip really wasn't a top contender throughout his career. But, I mean, like, I would not mind seeing Michael Waltrip come back. I don't know who he will join with, considering all the charters, I believe, are, like, bought up or are millions and millions of dollars. Maybe it could be a one-off somehow. But, realistically, I don't see Michael Waltrip uh, racing next season. Maybe a one-off in the future. Maybe not. I don't know. But... I don't see it, but it would be really cool for Michael Walsh to race. What are your guys' opinions on that? So here my third story, and almost the last one. Are the NASCAR fans react to Brad Keselowski electing not to, pursue, not to pursue Team Penske's copyright claims? Also from essentially sports. So, just a quick sum up of this. Uh, the name that went over Brad Keselowski's door for, like, ever since he was in Penske... Technically, that font belongs to Penske, not Brad Kozlowski. So, fans are like, oh, Brad Kozlowski, that's your font, you gotta get it, and Brad Kozlowski, it's not my font, plus, I'm now part of RFK. It's gonna be a new brand, I want my name to be a new brand, and I really like how it's looking. So, I, I in my opinion, I definitely think that he should probably choose a new font since he's not part of Penske anymore, and he is trying to, like, rebrand the entirety of Roush Fenway. And I think this Twitter user sums it up really well. Is it petty for Penske to not allow Brad to use his own in-house font at a different company? Does Coca-Cola allow Pepsi to use their font? Does Chevy allow Ford to use their font? And, yeah, it's... You, you don't just see, you know, a Coca-Cola-style Pepsi. One of the ways you can identify the brands is just from the their font. I, cause like, I've been looking for a specific NASCAR font to like type all my documents in because I think that'd be really cool. And like, I keep searching through, I can't find a specific NASCAR font. And when I'm making paint schemes in NASCAR and said line, I, I have made a few that are really close to actual paint schemes. I have the, I have made like actual M&Ms and they, it's just because they have the M&M font in the game. So you can definitely tell a brand by its font. Like, you tell an artist from their art style. And I definitely think that Penske not allowing Brad to take over his font, or take over his font from Penske, that, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And I am all for that. And our last story... If I could stop hitting wrong buttons here. Is, uh... Well, for me, it is kind of sort of a sad one. Uh, you might notice I'm currently wearing an M&M's hat, M&M's shirt. I have a drawn M&M's car behind me, thanks to my friend. I have the actual M&M's car right over here, the caramel M&M's one with the lights shining in it. And if you look around my entire room, I have nothing but... M&M's, and Snickers, and Skittles, cars, wrappers, literally everything Mars, all around my room, of the number 18 M&M's car. Well, Mars is leaving Joe Gibbs Racing after 2022. This is according to uh, Racer.com. I have also seen it on NBC Sports and Yahoo.com. So, I was like, no, this is this is a prank, and I looked through, I googled it, and uh, there's there's a lot of trusted brands saying that this is actually going to happen. 
A sports Business Journal first reported the news Monday afternoon, which Joe Gibbs Racing has confirmed. Mars, notably its M&M's brand, has been a primary sponsor at Joe Gibbs Racing since 2008. The first season, Kyle Busch began driving for the team. With Mars colors on his Toyota, Busch has won over 50 races in the NASCAR Cup Series in both 2015 and 2019. Um, and both Gibbs and Bush have mentioned, like, tons of, oh, yes, Mars' family, all that stuff. I'm kind of disappointed to see Mars leave NASCAR because Kyle's paint schemes have just become iconic. Like, he's literally the most colorful car on the track. Like, everywhere else is running these dark black, dark blue, dark everything cars. And you have Kyle, bright yellow M&M's car. And even when he was driving the dark blue caramel car, it still had color to it. You could tell it between all the other cars in the field. And it's going to be sad to see that go. And I do know that a few people might think, oh yeah, it's because of what he said at Martinsville. Which, yeah, is a totally reasonable um, idea. But uh, Joe Gibbs was actually notified earlier in the summer about Mars's leaving. Uh, so that way he could start looking for new sponsorship for the number 18 Toyota Camry. Uh, Mars has also been the official partner of NASCAR since 2000, with uh, the Mars named as the sport's official chocolate. Um, recording. Okay. So, yeah, the number 18 M&M's car will be no more. Who will be the sponsor in 2023? That is a good question. I'm going to speculate it is going to be the Interstate Batteries. I think Interstate Batteries is going to step up and sponsor the 18 a lot more. Uh, you saw last season that Sport Clips also sponsored the number 18, so you might see more of that. Um, but I, I definitely don't think you're going to see, like, M&M's. M&M's, was, M&M's and Mars were, like, on the majority of Kyle's cars. And then, like, Interstate Batteries and Sports, sports Clips were on there for a couple of races. I don't think you're going to get to see that for 2023. I think you're going to see the number 18 in a lot of different paint schemes with a lot of different sponsors. Yet again, M&M's has been in NASCAR since 2000, before I was even born. And after about 21 years of support, or 22 years of support at the end of this season, I definitely see it being time to pack the bags. NASCAR is a very expensive sport, and Mars is probably just done paying with NASCAR, probably done with some of Kyle Busch's an- antics. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty disappointing to see the Mars brand leave NASCAR. Well, those are the uh, the most recent stories, up, and all of you guys are now up to date. I will Put the links in the description below. I'll actually send the NBC Sports uh, version of the Mars leaving story. Um, but all the links I used will be in the description down below. And yeah, if you enjoyed this content, um, I've been meaning to get more scripted NASCAR videos like this. Uh, so it won't just me be sitting around here for 13 minutes trying to think of what to say. Uh, but I just had a couple of things of breaking news I just wanted to mention. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and ring that notification bell, so that way you don't miss an upload. I upload a lot of shorts. Uh, I find those really entertaining and probably a lot better than the rest of my content, so feel free to go check those out. Um, I'm usually uploading a lot randomly on random weekends, so you'll always have some content somewhere. So, that will be all for today. I wish you guys a merry off-season and happy Christmas. See y'all later, and race on.